Hello, and welcome to Dr. Colbert's Divine Health Podcast. I am Mary Colbert. And I'm Don Colbert. And today we are going to be talking about something, unfortunately, that is plaguing way too many people, arthritis. Mary, I cannot tell you how many people I see every day that are either having to have a knee replacement, a hip replacement, or having severe pain in one of their joints, usually their hands, or their neck, or their back, or their knees, or their hips, or other joints, and it's from arthritis. And the most common cause, let's first, what is arthritis? People say, what is arthritis? Well, arthritis is simply inflammation in these joints, and the inflammation eventually erodes the cartilage that line the joints, and it degenerates the cartilage so that eventually you have bone on bone and severe pain and eventually deformities can occur. And that eventually will lead to a joint replacement. And so many people are having joint replacements and then every 10 to 15 years they have to have it redone, but they're destroying their joints mainly from their weight. The mm -hmm. most common cause of degenerative arthritis, which, uh, which occurs after the age of 40, is simply the obesity epidemic. Mm. Our joints were not meant to carry, you know, the amount of weight that we're carrying. You're, so many people, I, for example, one person came in, severe arthritis in the knees and their hips. They say, my orthopedist say I need, I need total joint replacements, both knees, both hips. Well, the person weighs 300 pounds and they're 5'8". And I say, you've exceeded your weight limits for your joints. Those joints were only meant to weigh about, uh, those, your body was only meant to carry about 180 pounds, and you've almost doubled your weight. And if you were to run on those joints, you have as much as 10 times your weight on those joints. So if you're weighing, uh, so for example, a 300-pound person, if they're running on those joints, can you imagine that's over a ton? That's 3,000 pounds of force on those knees, on those hips. You're wearing the cartilage out, and eventually the cartilage gets thin, it, it degenerates, and eventually a bone on bone. Same thing happens in the back, same thing happens in the neck, same thing happens in the hands. You know, one thing I'd like for people to just get this mindset is people think because you age, you need to begin to expect certain things to start happening to your body because you're getting older and your mom and dad or grandmother, grandfather, whatever, they had arthritis. So, you know, it just expect it. It's going to come. I want to tell you something. You do not need to grow old, old. You can grow old healthy and yes, be absolutely. healthy. I'm telling you, folks, we know what we're talking about. You do not have to accept these lies that you have to have arthritis because your mom had it or your dad had it because what's happening is knowledge has increased and there's so much now we now know about arthritis that there is things you can do instead of having to take meds and pain meds for arthritis and surgeries, there is real answers that you can avoid having arthritis. And if you have arthritis, there is things you actually can start doing today if you want to get rid of it. I believe that with my whole heart. I've seen it too many people, too many times. Exactly right. But let me explain too. Just aging will set us up for joint degeneration and, and loss of cartilage, but also our diet. There's certain foods that trigger inflammation, like fried foods. One of the worst foods for the joints is eating fried foods. Those French fries, those chips that you crave, you are inflaming your body and you're setting yourself up for arthritis. Those excessive amount of omega-6 fats that's in your soybean oil, your corn oil, most all salad dressings, most all mayonnaise, chuck full of omega-6 fats that, it, that actually can inflame your joints. For you people with joint pains in your hands, let me tell you what's causing it. Most people say, I don't know what's causing it. Well, I'm going to tell you the foods that cause it. First of all, fried foods, especially your corn, fried corn chips, your uh, potato chips, your french fries, anything deep fried, but also nightshades. Listen to nightshades. It's literally a pain or pleasure. Exactly. It's totally Now, it. let me tell you what's wow. strange, and I've had this. I know firsthand I've seen, have treated thousands of patients with this. So generally speaking, the food you crave is the food that's inflaming your joints. And for so many people, they come to my office and they say they have these nodules forming on their 
fingers that are, we call them Heberden's nodes, they're arthritic nodules, or you're getting pains in your joints, it's you. You may be saying, it's my thumb, my thumb's hurting. Well, let me tell you the foods that are inflaming you. First of all, anything deep fried, or your corn chips, or your potato chips, or your french fries, which you probably crave. Number two, it's your cheese, and you're probably a cheese lover, but not just cheese, but especially cooked cheese, like pizza, macaroni and cheese. That is inflammatory for your joints. Now, feta cheese is not. If you're a pizza lover, you get your cauliflower crust instead of gluten because gluten can also inflame your joints as well as corn can inflame your joints. But you use feta cheese instead. Feta cheese has casein A2 that is much less inflammatory to the joints. And that's what I'll rarely do once a month, maybe, have a cauliflower crust pizza with some feta cheese. And so you can do that. Now, the other foods that really inflame your joints, especially your hands and your thumb, you know who you are, tomatoes. The nightshades. Wow. Tomatoes, peppers, bell peppers, green bell peppers, yellow bell peppers, red bell peppers, as well as uh, jalapeno peppers, habanero peppers, cayenne peppers, any peppers. You're the pepper. I used to be a pepper lover. I loved them. Yeah, it's amazing, too, Don, because psoriasis is also linked with some of this. Exactly, exactly. These nightshades are inflammatory. Now, what happens, like I said, we generally crave the very foods that inflame our joints. For me... I used to crave tomatoes and peppers. I'd have salsa every day, loved it. And I'd get a big bowl of salsa, dip my chicken in it, and then I'd drink the rest of the bowl, a big bowl, okay? And I was inflaming my skin, inflaming my joints, inflaming everything. But other nightshades are potatoes. Yes, your potato chips. Yes, your, your French fries, your mashed potatoes. But especially when you get an inflammatory food, nightshade, like potatoes, and you deep fry it. It's doubly inflammatory, triply inflammatory for you. Now, why do they call them nightshades? Because the nightshades contain a uh, a chemical in it called solanin, and this solanin literally is inflammatory to so many people's GI tract and joints. And what happens, it's a new world food that when Columbus came over back in 1492, the Indians would eat the nightshade, so they took them back to Europe. And the people were not prepared. Their bodies were not prepared for these lectins. Actually, solanin is a lectin or a protein molecule that typically inflames the joints. I was just wondering why they call it nightshade. And so I what maybe the, it was a food that no, grew at night well, or something. <laughs> well, it's a night, that's just a, a classification of it. But okay. what's so in, incredible is the Italians noticed back hundreds of years ago that these nightshades were inflaming their people. So what they started doing, they started peeling the skin off the tomatoes and peppers and de-seeding them. And then they removed the lectins or the solen, the nightshade component that caused the GI tract problems and the joint problems. And so they were able to eat these without the problems, generally speaking. Okay, so give us the nightshades again. Okay, so the the nightshades are tomatoes, potatoes, peppers, eggplant, paprika ashwagandha is another nightshade that is in a lot of adrenal supplements and then goji berries those are your nightshades okay so zucchini's not no it's not okay no. and cucumbers are not no they're not i'm just thinking because they have seeds in them but they're not nightshades. they're not nightshades okay nightshades right. contain that lectin called solanin that inf- many times inflames the joints now for you it may not for some people, it does. For others, it, do, it does not. But those are the key foods that inflame the body. Now, let's talk about the most anti-inflammatory foods, okay? These are foods in my book that's coming out in January 2022, Beyond Keto. It's the healthy keto Mediterranean diet with lots of healing, natural, God-made oils like olive oil, organic extra virgin, and especially the high phenolic olive oils as well as avocado oil, cold-pressed, macadamia, almond, walnut oil. All of those nice uh, nut oils, cold-pressed, are real healthy. Fish oil is real healthy for your joints and for inflammation. These are pro- this book is a program you can live on. Oh, sure. This is Absolutely. for life. For life. Absolutely. Yeah. This okay. is the diet I live on. Right. And then lots of salads. But if you do have joint issues, you will probably have to hold your peppers and tomatoes for a season. Then you can rotate them in once or twice a week, generally without a problem. Or you peel them, de them. And there's usually not a problem. But I have lots of salads. I put olive oil all over my salad. I get a little grilled chicken or you can use turkey or you can use fish, salmon. 
And you say, well, wow, those are those help your joints? Absolutely. These are anti-inflammatory foods. And I've discussed this again in the book, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the diet. But the most inflama- anti-inflammatory liquid is water. And I drink lots of water. You say, well, what about coffee? What about tea? Too much coffee can actually inflame your joints. It'll dehydrate your body. I had a patient who had terrible, arth- getting terrible joint pains. He was drinking a pot of coffee a day. He'd drink a pot at a time. And so he cut out his coffee and then started drinking water. All his joint pains went away. So too much coffee is not good for you. Or even better, what I do is I make my coffee with alkaline water. And so it offsets the acids in the coffee. So, but the best, probably one of the best anti-inflammatory beverages is just water. I squeeze some lemon or lime in it and boom, you've got alkaline water that's delicious. And I don't add any sugar, stevia, nothing. I just love the... The, the taste of water and lemon, and especially with ice. And so that's a wonderful anti-inflammatory program that you can do that'll start to turn down your arthritis. And then we want, so we drink, we eat the anti-inflammatory diet, we drink the water, and then we exercise. So we want, we got to get the weight off. The more you weigh, the more arthritis you're going to have. It just goes that way. That's the way it is. So the best exercise for you, if you're obese or morbidly obese, Think gliding exercise, like pool exercises. I love recumbent bike. Really good is elliptical machine because you just glide on that. No trauma to your joints. If you're walking, it can actually hurt your joints if you're morbidly obese. Now, again, for most people, if you don't only have mild arthritis, walking is fine. And doing it five days a week, start for 20 minutes, eventually work up to 30 to 45 minutes and get you a partner. And we have found that when you walk or when you cycle, especially with cycling, a lot of the the best orthopedics are putting their patients with severe arthritis in their knees and hips on the recumbent bike because it literally helps those joint pains tremendously. It literally helps to shave off the bad cartilage. and, And then we put them on a nutritional program where they can regenerate, hopefully, not always, but sometimes their cartilage through certain nutrients. And we put them on natural anti-inflammatories instead of the ibuprofen and the naproxen and the Celebrex and the Mobic and all those meds that can cause high blood pressure, stress the kidneys, stress the gut. We have natural means to turn down the inflammation. So again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to put a program together with exercise being absolutely critical. A lot of people say, I can't exercise, it hurts too much. I say, just start five minutes a day. Just get a bike or a recumbent bike is great. You can get them real cheap now. You go to play again sports, get them real cheap, and just put it in front of your TV. And don't use it as a clothes rack. <laughs> so many people get those, they turn into clothes racks. You put it in front of the TV, you get on there five minutes a day. And eventually do five minutes twice a day. Eventually work up to 20, 30 minutes a day, five days a week. At least take a Sabbath and watch your knees improve. The most arthritis I see is in the knees, mainly due to arthritis. And now we're going to talk about nutrients that help this tremendously, but we got to get the weight off. Your frame was not, to me- was not meant to hold this much weight, and because of the weight, you are literally degenerating your knees. And here's what happens, too, for you football players, you athletes, you have injured your hands from football or from sports, you have also injured your knees. That trauma creates inflammation and eventually leads to arthritis. So instead of having to have hip replacement and knee replacements and being on pain meds, if people would learn to bring their weight to the healthy weight that their frame was designed for, they would be saving themselves a lot of pain money and a whole lot of Well, absolutely. And so, but first we try and get them on the lifestyle program, the water, the diet, the exercise. That's first. And we try and unload uh, the weight on the joint. Because if you don't, it's going to continue it's to period. degenerate. It's, it's kind of a waste. Now, also, it. we put them on supplements. Supplements are absolutely amazing for uh, supporting healthy cartilage. And, and as well as ta- talked about the foods. If you're eating those inflammatory foods, it's going to mm-hmm. be really tough to turn it around. So what we want to do is we want to get into some supplements that literally start to restore so many people's joints. And then also I use powerful healing modalities, which other uh, doctors have. We have these amazing lasers that help the joints. 
We also have stem cells and platelet-rich plasma, which you can find that, that will many times help if you can do the other, the diet, the exercise, the nutrition, and the water, then yeah, it can prevent surgery, uh, knee replacement or hip yeah, replacement. If someone has been heavy for a long, long time <coughs> and the damage is done, even if they lose the weight, oh, let me just tell you, absolutely, they're going to have to do to restore it. Right? I have prevented so many people from having knee and hip replacement. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you that program. Okay. But I'm just telling you, if you don't lose the weight, if you don't change your diet, you will eventually need a knee or hip replacement. Period. It's just the way, it, the way is. it is. Okay. And even if the stem cells and the or the platelet-rich plasma or the lasers will help delay it, but if you don't get the weight off, you will eventually go there. Okay, so let's so talk. So they have to become a bionic woman or man. <laughs> well, yeah, they'll have to go. They'll have to be careful going through the airport. They'll yeah. have, they won't be able to go through. They have an iron knee. Right, and an exactly. Iron hip. Yep. Well, not iron, but they. Or uh, whatever. Is, okay. What's it made out of? Titanium, titanium, correct, yeah. titanium, but they, they can't, can't go through the regular scanner, okay? So anyway, let's talk about some things that help the joints besides food. Well, first of all, collagen. Now, not just any collagen. People are saying, well, I'm taking my bovine collagen or my fish collagen. Doesn't one, work. Well, it, it may help a little. The one I find that works the best in my patients is the chicken collagen. Chicken collagen has a predominance of type 2 collagen, that supports the joints. And everyone with arthritis, I start them on our collagen. It's our hydrolyzed chicken collagen, one scoop twice a day. Now, I just had a big fellow who was like 300 and something pounds. He was like 6'8". I had to start him on two scoops twice a day. He's so big. Right. And then also, besides the collagen, I start many of these patients on a combination of glucosamine sulfate and chondroitin sulfate and MSM so that you don't have to write all those down, it's in a product we call Synovix, S-Y-N-O-V-X. And it contains these products that support healthy knees. I've had so many patients that come in, especially with arthritis in the knees. It may help uh, arthritis in the hips, but especially the knees. It's amazing. Wow. We start these patients on the collagen, uh, usually a scoop twice a day, and the Synovix usually two tabs twice a day. And I've had many patients who are going to have knee replacements, and they were able to cancel those surgeries after being on it. Now, some of them needed three tabs of the Synovix twice a day. Some needed four twice a day. That's amazing. But that works amazing for some people. And then what I use for some due to the inflammatory component of the arthritis, that mainly supports the cartilage and the collagen, the the synovics with the, with the collagen, but then the inflammatory components, all those inflammatory mediators to turn those down instead of using ibuprofen, naproxen, uh, you know, Celebrex, Mobic, I use natural anti-inflammatories. Right, because you know what, Don, you're talking about getting to the root of the problem and not masking it with something else. And people many times are so used to just treating symptoms instead of getting to the root exactly of the right. problem. And the, the two combos that work so good as well, I believe, and studies have shown it works as good or better than these anti-inflammatories is just curcumin, and you have to take at least 500 milligrams, two tabs in the morning, two in the evening. And Boswellia, which is frankincense, but not just any Boswellia. It needs to be the 5-loxin, L-O-X-I-N, Boswellia, or the A-K-B-A, Boswellia, which is 100 milligrams. And it's usually one or two of those twice a day. And again, we have those at my office. You can get them online. But those are absolutely amazing. Now, it doesn't work immediately. But after a few weeks, along with everything else, along with the Synovix, along with the collagen, along with the water, with the diet, with the activity, the recumbent bike or elliptical, especially those gliding motions, what those gliding motions do is it boosts the production of synovial fluid that lubricates those joints and helps to restore the joints, especially when you're on the right nutrition and you're avoiding the the corn chips, the potato chips, the french fries, the nightshades, the fried foods, and the cheese and the dairy, okay? Right. And then it's amazing how the body can heal when you put in lots of those anti-inflammatory oils like olive oil and fish oil and avocado oil and, and uh, these powerful anti-inflammatory foods. So it works absolutely amazing when you do this. Now you say, well, what else do I do for uh, 
you know, for my joints. All this is also in Don's little Bible cure booklet for arthritis. And a lot more information is in there as well. So I know we're giving you a lot of information, but you can also get this little booklet on our website or you can go to Amazon or any bookstore. And it's actually, you're going to be updating this book. Right, I am. I've just got to have more time. (laughs) But a real important exercise for arthritis sufferers is stretching. And we uh, oh. stretching is one of the best ways to actually uh, increase your flexibility, improve your range of motion of these joints, and you can get stretching exercises to do daily. And it is amazing when you combine the cycling or elliptical with these stretching motions, and you'll improve the range of motion of your joints, if it's your knee, if it's your hip, if it's your shoulder, if it's your back. The stretching will help to restore mobility in those joints. The thing I use with a lot of my patients, and again, I know that you want, most doctors don't have these. We have these powerful lasers now that help with inflammation in joints. And we have this EVRL laser that helps. We have the new Orconia FX635 laser. These are very expensive lasers, but they're actually FDA approved for chronic back pain, and it works amazing. And I put people in it, and I only have it at my Dallas office. I'm getting one from my Orlando office. But I'm real excited about these new lasers because the lasers use light energy, and it literally helps decrease inflammation in these joints, which is critical, but it just focuses on those key areas of pain. And then we, we put it all together. We put the laser once a week or twice a week with the, uh, you know, the nutrition with the exercise, with the diet, with the water. And then the last little component is either little stem stem cells or PRP. Sometimes you don't even need that. But we find the laser actually helps the stem cells go to that area where it's needed most. So it's really important to uh, put the whole program together for you chronic arthritis sufferers so that you can reap the most benefits. And the other thing that's critically important is Proverbs 17, 22. <laughs> the word, the word, the word the of word. God. Using the word of God, it says in Proverbs 17, 22, that a merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Drying of the bones, I interpret as like arthritis. That's what's happening. Yeah. You're drying yeah. out your bones. You're getting arthritis. The merry heart is one of the best medicine, the best medicine I've ever found. When you have a merry heart, when you're laughing, when you're full of joy, when you're full of peace, it is amazing how it's flipping a switch on for your body to heal. It literally is one of the best quenchers of inflammation I've ever found. Now, what happened years ago, there was a a patient named Norman Cousins who actually was the editor of the Saturday Review magazine. He developed a very painful autoimmune condition called ankylosing spondylitis, caused severe, severe pain in his back, severe back pain. It was so severe he had to take medicines for it, and, and he reasons, he says, if, if negative emotions can aggravate disease, why can't positive emotions reverse disease? So he started a, a laughter therapy, and he'd get these old movies the Marx Brothers and other funny movies. I think it may have been the Three Stooges, but he would watch those movies, and he found out that about 10 minutes of laughter would get rid of his joint pains in his back for about 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes longer. So he started practicing regular belly laughter, and by practicing belly laughter, he overcame one of the most painful autoimmune chronic pain diseases called ankylosing spondylitis. And they actually developed a a center of laughter at, I believe it was uh, Loma Linda. And that's going on to this day because of the tremendous benefits of laughter, especially belly laughter, in helping to overcome chronic pain. So for you patients that have chronic arthritis, chronic pain, you enter into joy and laughter, and even if you can watch funny movies, you can remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
But it's also healing to your body and your joints. And I'm going to tell you something. It's very important that you walk free of offense and forgiveness. Yes. Because for, uh, walking in an unforgiving heart, and you have to practice this every day, folks, because we all get offended every day with something. Yes, So absolutely. It, this is not a one-time thing that fixes it. You have to practice this, like, you know, lifting weights, strengthening that muscle, that unforgiveness mu muscle. You need to get it weak and strengthen the forgiveness muscle because what happens when you um, walk around where your heart is full of bitterness and resentment and keeping a record book of wrong and rehashing wrongs, what, what you're doing to your body, it's like drinking poison and hoping the other person heals, you know, dies. It, it's destroying you. It's oil and vinegar does not mix. That vinegar will dry your bones. It will cause arthritis to flare up worse. So when you have the oil of the Holy Spirit in your life, and that is an oil of walking in forgiveness and asking him, the Holy Spirit, to help you be able to do this because you can't do this on your own. You ask the Holy Spirit to give you the ability to walk in the spirit of forgiveness and divine forgetfulness. Yes. And that is a big part of bringing healing to your body. That is the most important thing I think you can do for well, you. Yes. And remember, Paul said, I believe is in Philippians 3, 13, I'm not sure, but he says, this one thing I do, this yeah. one thing one I thing. do, forgetting those things that are behind and pressing forward to those things that are ahead, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But the one thing he did, see, this one thing, forgetting. Too many Christians are walking in offense and unforgiveness and bitterness, and we have found that joint pains get worse for those that are have tremendous offense. Walk free of offense, and if there's one thing you should do is forgive. Forgive and don't let the sun go down your wrath. And we teach our grandkids to do this. If anyone bothered you, well, let's forgive them. You know, always forgive them before you go to bed. Don't let the sun go down your wrath. Let it go or else guess what? You're going to harbor in for unforgiveness. And I have found so many times bitterness and unforgiveness generally uh, will harbor, will, will, the effects will occur in the joints. Now, one other thing, realize your cartilage that lines all your joints is composed of approximately 80% water. Now, remember, when you were full of bitterness, unforgiveness, you don't have your joy, you are drying out your joints, you're drying out your cartilage, you're asking for arthritis. Drink lots of water. Mm. Take those healing oils, those anti-inflammatory oils. Lay the foods on the altar. Practice intermittent fasting. Now, again, you say, I don't know how to fast. Get my book, The Fasting Zone. I teach you how. I walk you through a Daniel fast to help you fast your body, crucify your flesh so that the healing power of God can come in and start to reduce your weight rapidly and start to reverse disease. Many times it's that simple. You know something, the word of God teaches us that the kingdom of God is like a precious pearl that is hidden in, the, in a field. And a man sells all that he has to buy this field to find this one precious pearl. Healing and walking in health is the most valuable pearl you can purchase. But I want you to know, God has an answer for every disease. And it's usually not a medicine. It's usually not a drug. He has answers for everything that you're battling. If you are willing to search it out, find it out, quit being one of these passive people sitting and waiting for someone to tell you what to do. Develop within you the desire to search out find out, learn, grow. Don't stop learning. Don't start, stop growing because then you have started dying. Continue to grow. Continue to press forward and looking for what God's answers are in the earth. And then I believe we will see tons and tons of people, more common than uncommon, living to be 120 with vigor and health and strength and joy for the purpose of the gospel, we need you. We need you to stay here. We need you to share the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, as long as you can. Fight it. Do it. Now you again, can do it. I, I got to tell you, too, so many patients come in and say, but Dr. Colbert, I crave my tomatoes. I crave my pizza. 
Uh, I crave my corn chips, my potato. I crave my French fries. Uh, my body needs it. I need it. I feel happy. It's my comfort food. Realize the flesh is dumb. It craves the foods that inflame the body. The, most, the key foods that inflame your joints the most are simply those foods. Cheese is the worst, especially pizza. Tomatoes, French fries, potato chips, corn chips. feta cheese is chips. okay. Feta cheese is all right, yes. So again... Forget that. If you're craving the food, crucify your flesh. Crucify it. Nail it to the cross. Amen. Fast your body. And your body won't like it. Do intermittent fasting. Follow the Beyond Keto program. The Mediterranean Keto is the healthiest diet in the world. But real important, start take, drinking water. I love water with lemon or lime. Put ice in it. Enjoy it. Get the uh, sparkling water, the Pellegrino. It is absolutely delicious. You will eventually grow to love it and its joint fuel. Alkaline say- water is really good, too. Yeah. Now, alkaline oh, yeah. water. I cannot tell you how many patients have started drinking alkaline water with a little lime or lemon. And it Pellegrino. helps joint pains tremendously, yeah. tremendously. But also remember, take a few key supplements. You don't have to start with a lot. Just start with our collagen collagen one scoop twice a day is a great starting point this information is in my book the bible cure for arthritis real simple and you can do it and uh, just again anti-inflammatory foods water exercise cycling amazing or if you're not morbidly obese just walking starting to do move something. do something elliptical swimming or do pool exercise besides just taking meds exactly <laughs> and eventually we can get you off those meds yep. onto natural means and listen to this podcast again write down these supplements if you need it to make it real simple here it is again and when you go to drcolbert.com our website or divinehealth.com that's where our supplements are You become a partner of what we're doing. We so appreciate you. I know you can get other products and things from the health food store, and that's fine. I know people, but we're trying to make it as affordable as we can. But let me just go over these for them real quick. Number one, the most important thing I found for most of my patients, and what I take every day, twice a day, is I take the collagen. One scoop, twice a day. I actually put mine in my coffee. Now, let me tell you a little story. Back a few years ago, I was starting to develop stiffness in my knees when we'd go on long flights. My knees would be stiff. That's a sign you've got arthritis. Then I started climbing the stairs in my house, and all of a sudden my knees would ache right in the inside portion of the knees. Well, the key symptoms of arthritis is stiffness of a joint, pain in the joint, and uh, you get stiff with when you rest your joint, and it worsens uh, usually as you use your joint. And so eventually the joints will start cracking and creeping and with or cracking and, and creaking with movements. And eventually the mobility is restricted. Well, I started taking the collagen, a scoop twice a day. And guess what? The stiffness went away within about a month. And then the joint pains went away. When I, I can run up the stairs, chase the kids, none. Now, again, you say, did you, did you get x-rays? No, but I was having the symptoms. I was having the stiffness. I was having the pain. And that's usually the first signs of arthritis. But the, the collagen is what I use to clear it. Now, also for you with worsened arthritis, add the Synovix, S-Y-N-O-V-Y-X, two twice a day. Start two twice a day. If you have a lot of inflammation, we add the curcumin, 500 milligrams, two twice a day, and the Boswellia, 5 loxin or Boswellia, AKBA, 100 milligrams, one to two twice a day. And then we, and also fish oil. We love fish oil. I put my patients on about 2,000 units of fish oil twice a day. And I personally like the Core Omega Max, but our fish oil is also really good too. So again, our salmon oil, wonderful, two twice a day. So again, these are the basic nutrients we need. And as we nourish our joints, as we walk in love, as we walk in joy, as we get our sleep, as we hydrate our body and follow an anti-inflammatory diet and exercise and speak to your joints. Remember, speak to your mountain. It says in Mark 11, 23, 24, if you speak to your mountain and speak to it and, and thank him for it, say, I speak to that arthritis, arthritis be gone, and I thank you, Lord, my knees are healed. I see them as healed. As you speak it, it becomes a reality. You do your part. God does his He part. honors faith. That's right. And you have to speak to your mountain every yep. day, your arthritis, and tell it to be gone, be cast in the sea, 
and you speak health and healing over your knees, over your hips, over your back, over your neck, over your hands, and watch your body start to respond with healing. It's Re- exciting to right, see. Right, exactly. You have to remove the thorn, though. Remove the thorn that's causing no the disease. Offense, no offense. And no offense. And no and the nightshades. Foods, that's right. Cheese. So when fried you, foods. having done all, now you can stand. You can't be doing all. Things that cause harm and then say, oh, I'm a believe by faith. Right, exactly. There's lots of thorns in there. There's food thorns. There's too much coffee thorns, (laughs) too much acidic drinks. Oh, sodas. We didn't get the soda. Sugar is inflammatory, folks. If you're drinking sodas and Cokes and and sweet tea, that's going to flame. But again, it's all it's It's in my book. book. Yep. Get the book and then watch your joints heal. But you got to speak to your mountain. Don't forget to speak to the mountain and use the word of God as a sword to overcome arthritis. It's our desire that you walk in divine health. God bless you to the next time. God bless you.